Hey everyone, we're gonna be starting the class soon. We're just waiting on a few more people to join and then we will get started. Feel free to hop on over to the chat uh, bar and say hello, maybe let everyone know where you're from. And then we will be starting soon. Wow, it looks like we have people from everywhere on this call today. Okay, I think we got about just everyone in. We might have a few more people joining as the class starts, but I'm gonna go ahead and introduce Josh. He's a brand ambassador with Tombow, and he's gonna be teaching you guys how to create a one-of-a-kind home portrait, and he'll be walking you through different tips and tricks for achieving that realistic line drawing home portrait using our mono drawing pens, plus a few other products. Um, if you have any questions during the class, feel free to just put them in the chat bar and I'll do my best to answer everyone's questions. Um, and without further ado, I'm going to hand it over to Josh. Awesome. Thank you very much. And I just want to thank Tombo and Michaels for letting us do this class. And thank you everybody here is watching and participating. I see some friends and family already on here, but everybody from all other countries, thank you for joining us. Just a few things before we get started. I am not... Uh, artistically, educationally uh, trained or anything. I'm all self-taught. So if I use some terminology that you may not recognize, I probably made it up or anything like that. Also, if you have any tech questions, like if you can't see the paper or anything, please let them know. We'll try to zoom in and adjust that. But again, I just want to thank everybody for coming. I want to give a shout out to my kids, Emerson and Finn, and my wife, Mary. Hey! So anyway, let's draw. What I want to show you all real quick before we go on is just going to start with a blank piece of paper. I'm using a mechanical pencil. That's my kind of my favorite kind of tool to use. There's uh, no pressure on that. You can use a, a lead pencil or things like that. But one thing about house portraits that you're going to tend to do a lot of are shapes that are triangles. And so I just encourage you while we're here, like you don't have to do this right now, but just practice your triangles, lots of rectangles from either horizontal or vertical. And I always carry like a little sketchbook everywhere I go and I'll just practice these shapes and do things with them. But we'll have a lot of this and also a lot of circles sometimes because you know, the windows or whatever, but these are just some fun shapes just to practice with, learn how to use them. Now doing straight lines is not an easy thing. So one of the other tools I like to use a lot is just a little very cheap, clear uh, T ruler. And if you notice, I have some coins on here, excuse me. And uh, I learned this trick from somebody on, on YouTube, but um, if you've ever used a ruler when you're drawing, especially with pens, when you start to take your line across with the ink pen and lift your ruler, if you don't have these coins here, you sometimes get a smear or a weird spread. And so to help prevent that, even with pencil, it gives a little bit of lift off the paper having the coin right here. So I just, I taped it on, you know, nobody's inspecting how cool everything looks. And so then you just get a nice clean line like that. And then you don't have any bleed from the pen. And another little tool I like to use if it's a little bit tighter spot is just these, you know, half circle rulers. And the same thing, I got the coins on here too, just so we don't get any spread or, you know, smears from the ink pen or things like that. And just since we're doing these classes, these are the type of pens I use. Uh, they're the Tombow mono drawing pens and their sizes one, three, and five. And one's great for doing the tiny details. Three is like most of my line shapes for the piece do with that. And then five, I like to use that for sometimes my banners and some text that you'll see at the end. But these pens are phenomenal. They're a great price. I've been using them for several years now and I've tried a lot of them, but these guys do great. And you know, for paper, like right now I have a heavy cardstock. And when you're working with pen and ink, you want a paper that's gonna absorb the ink really well. And so I'm always fond of cardstock or watercolor paper. And that's just, again, a, a preference for me and what's been working. And then I do a lot of pencil. And so there's a lot of erasing going on. And so these mono plastic erasers are phenomenal. Uh, they don't leave a mess. They don't leave hardly any shavings and they're easy just to clean the smear off. And so as you can see, this is probably like my millionth one I've been using. I just get a rub a little bit of lead and then we can just get some lines out of there and it's like hardly any mess. So these are the tools I like to use. They just been helping me doing these for numerous years and, and it's a lot of fun. So, so we've got eraser, pencil and pen. 
And again, just we do lots of squares and circles and shapes. Um, hopefully some of you guys have watched a cooking show before and you notice like when they cook the meal, they don't do the whole meal through the show, they just do segments of it. And my normal house portrait usually takes three to four hours. So we're not gonna do a whole house portrait together. So if you wanna focus while we're drawing together on just one section of the house or a door or a window, that's all good. And then you can learn the process after that. You can rewatch the video or if you wanna message me on social media or email, you can do that as well. But we're just gonna do like just 10 minutes at each section of how I do a house portrait just to show you some of my techniques. And then you guys can go off and do your own and add your own style and flair to it. So here we go. This is the house we chose to do. This is just down the road from me. I live in Lakeland, Florida. And uh, as you can see, there's several different textures in this house. We got the, the siding right here. The, also the columns have some bricks, but also straight. And then you got the, the texture on the roof. And then we also got these fun things up here. And in the windows, thankfully, are all the same size. My personal house, every window is a different size, but thankfully this one's just equal for all of us. And just for details that I like to do later on, what we'll get to is I always save the plants and bushes for last, but I'll leave a little opening for them. They have like this little trellis guard at the bottom. We're not gonna work on that today. We got some stairs here, and then also the plants and everything like that. So usually when I do a house portrait, I like to get a fun straight on shot for it. And then I'm gonna take this out of the way, but uh, I'll try leaving the shot as best I can. I have it projected on a monitor to help me see what we're doing. But let's get drawn, let's get our pencils out. So right here real quick before we draw the house, it's mostly a rectangle, but there's a little dip. So what I like to do is I almost treat my pencil like I'm working with clay and modeling. And so there'll be a lot of lines. And so I just kind of give myself a little guard line for the whole roof at the top. And again, since we're in pencil, we can come back and erase a little bit later. So I'll do a nice straight line there. And the whole bottom house is fairly, fairly the same line as well. So just got this little guy going right here. And oops. And so that kind of helps us give us our little grid. And then I, when you look at the picture again, We've got how many windows? One, two, three, four, five, six, six windows. So for right here, we'll just practice around the door. I've already did a little sketch here, but I just, I don't try to make the door perfect right off the bat because I'm kind of just building and laying everything out so I know when I can come back and clean it up. And same with the columns. They're fairly close to the door. And sometimes a cheat I like to do if I don't have my ruler is I'll just use my pencil as a ruler, kind of give myself a little mark kind of give a little eye gauge right here on the paper, which is right here. You can see I've done a little bit earlier. And I'll do my column and then as you can see there's a little break right here. So I'm just giving myself a little line. Again, I'm just, I'm doing it really rough right now. I'm not trying to get everything perfect on the first time around. Cause that can be hard. It can be really stressful, a little rough on us. So just, again, just treat it like you're just, just get everything on the paper as best you can, as loose as you can. So you can come back and shape it up with the pen. And we'll do the other one right here, which I've already got marked, but and you can see these lines right here, all the same. So you come back in with the ruler and give yourself a little line across right there. Oops, that's off, but let's do this one. Let's see, right? Let's see. Okay, I'm on eraser, and then you just kind of clean it up a little bit right there, just so you know where things are gonna be. And since this, is a, this house has actually uh, been redone, it was a really old house, one of those 100 year old type bungalow houses we have down here. They just re, redid the house and gave it a little bit more of a modern look. But like the window frames, which are nice, they have that little edge up here at the top and you got the little paint right here. I don't do like all those details in my portrait, but I try to get close as I can to it, but we'll just do, a good rectangle right here for the window. I know it's gonna be divided in the middle and also in the middle again, and we can always you know, come back as well with the, with the trim around it, with the frame around the window. And again, that's why I like these rulers come in handy, whether it's uh, the T, cause you wanna get it like nice and lined and leveled and centered in the paper. And then you can just come back here and do the, the lines at the bottom of the window frame. And again, if you don't get your line perfect, it's okay. Just do another one and you can come back and erase it. Usually when I'm done with the pencil, or my pencil, it's just a huge mess. And I kind of just pick and choose where I want to ink my lines. And I can erase that later. But I just, I use my ruler as like kind of my guide for most of the beginning of the space. Cause then I, when I do my pen and ink, I don't want to have the perfect straight lines. I like to have that hand drawn look. And so again, the pencil is just kind of our guide rail. And the same with the, the roofs right here. 
can see there's, we got all these different angles. So I just at least try to figure out how far apart they are. So this is our house is kind of a, a fairly thing right there. So we have about three inches for this guy right here. Come across. It looks like this one's gonna be about the same too. It's about two and a half inches. And you can kind of freehand your, free your angles. Just give it like as close as you want to. Like so, and then you can come back later after like everything's, you know, looking good and feeling like it looks like a house. Then you come back and say like, oh, that one's too sharp and just edge it. Cause again, you want to save the pen and ink for last. And the pencil is just, you take your time you can ease into it. And hopefully too, when y'all are done, I would love to see how your house turned out. Don't be afraid to go take a picture of your house and do your own. Uh, that's how I kind of got my practice is just redrawing my own house over and over again. And it helps just to have a, a very good, bright, well-lit picture of it because as you can see in this one, the, the door is a dark door, and I had to go through one of my like Photoshop programs and just lighten it up a bit to pick up if there's like little trims and details inside the door. But so that's kind of like the the skeleton work of how I start a house portrait, like kind of the be, the beginning of where I get it. And this one's like the part that takes the most time, and it just it's the one that takes a lot of patience because you're tempted when you're drawing and sketching, you want to do every single detail, like you want to do the little squares in the door, you want to get the curtains. But save all those accessories for the end, because what if you find out your window's off by a little bit, or when you hold it up, you look at it's a little crooked. So save all the detail stuff. That I like to do those at the very end. My whole premise is trying to get the outline and the shape and kind of like the skeleton of the house. So that's kind of like our, our first phase of getting a house done. It just loose pencil and getting the shapes and everything out. Hey, Josh, it's, yes. it's Michelle popping in. Can you um, just slow down a little bit? I, I think a few people were just asking if could just slow down. Okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> I've had a couple cups of coffee and like some of you probably be, I'm a little nervous at doing something like this for the, for Michael's since they're an amazing store, but yeah, I'll, I'll take a little deep breath and slow down. But uh, yeah. And please, again, if y'all have questions, I may be just cause I've done so many of these, I may just be missing something for you guys, but these are some of the things I, you know, for the beginning process of the house. Why some of y'all catching up? Let me show you a few books real quick that I like. This is, um, again, since I'm self-taught, this is the Rendering in Pen and Ink by author L. Guptil. And you can get this on Amazon and it's a phenomenal book. And you're just seeing artwork from like over a hundred years. A lot of them done by, you know, quills and inks and things like different pens and inks. And it just shows you all the different techniques and different angles, helps you out with shadow and, and shading. Because with pen, you can't shade like you would do with a pencil or charcoal or pastel. You have to kind of do make different textures to kind of make the lines and depth. And so these are things I like to use when I'm doing like my plants and background stuff. So definitely check this book out. It's been a, like a favorite for me for learning for the last few years. And those of you who like to do some fun things, since I live in Florida and we get to go to Disney, I learned about this book too called Draw uh, to Life. And it's great for just, you know, figure drawings and kind of a more of a cartoony look, but it's a, a great book just for learning how to be better with your pen and pencil and have a better hand and uh, feel a little bit more confident in your tools that you're using. And it's just a uh, very helpful and I guess not too complicated of a book to follow. All right, so again, back to the house real quick. I was gonna add a few more lines right up here. And I like to use these uh, the millimeter and centimeter and like these little lines for kind of gauging my breaks between the separation in the wood and so that's also like another guideline for me is just uh using a ruler as much as you can to get out of it i mean the house is not going to be architecturally 100 percent perfect to measurements and lines but this can kind of give your at least your picture a whole even feel on everything uh i, I don't know how many pieces you've done before but you know it's like how come like this part is thicker or bigger or this part's out of a uh, perspective than the other one and so it just i like to just kind of use these to help me you know, for thickness and weight and heaviness on everything. All right, we're gonna go to the next page. And if we need to, I can come back to this at the, at the next part. All right, if you guys can see that, I'll bring it down a little bit more. All right, so this is the house that's been a little bit more shaped up, a little bit more cleaned up. As you can see, some of my lines are not super perfect right here. 
but that's again we can come back to it i've just i've come back and taken my time to clean up the columns to give a little bit more detail to the windows if you guys can see all that so i kind of gave a look a little break for the windows there i kind of made sure these lines are close to the same thickness as possible you could tell they taper off a little bit but again that stuff we can clean up but it's just trying to get the house in the right spot I think I learned late in the game when uh, creating art and commissions for people was once I was done, I realized, oh my goodness, the house is off by a half inch on one side or the other, because a lot of times people want to frame the art. So you need to think about when you're framing and matting uh, a piece of artwork, if it's going to be centered in the, in the piece. And so it's great to have centered in the paper and then also leave room around the edge just in case, you know, the, the frame one is a different size. So for instance, this piece of paper, it's an eight by 11 inch or eight and a half by 11 inch. And the average frame opening is an eight by 10. So this house will be able to fit perfectly in that little opening, but also gives us a little safe room to, you know, do some things on the edges. And some of my houses, I will go to the edges, but not often, but most times I try to keep everything in this just general centered area. And that's just a, a personal thing for me, kind of like with my style and my minimalist, uh, when it's all completed, you can kind of see how it's all centered and focused. But for this part right here, it's just now we just kind of make our lines a little bit straighter, make sure everything is, is, is connected. And as you can see real quick, one more thing is I draw really light when I do my first pencil. It's just, um, I think how I've always drawn. So it's, it's, I know it's probably hard for y'all to tell from the, the camera how light it is, but this next time around, I kind of just add a little bit more weight to it just to make sure I've got everything in the right spot, make sure the lines are lined up. As you can tell, like there's a little dip right here in this roof compared to where it is on this end. Only got a little space here, but at least everything's looking like it's in its right place. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a few lines with you, and if y'all have any questions, please feel free to send them on in. I'd like to hear how everybody's doing. So I just laid that one a little bit heavy right there, as well as this one right here. And again, you can just come back with the eraser and clean that up. I don't know how familiar everybody is with working with pencil, but sometimes when you're getting really into it, you start going across, maybe your hands get a little sweaty or you just put a little bit away on the paper, but then you notice you, you've got lead on the bottom of your hand and you've started to smear the art. So just a, a little trick I learned is I'll have like a little white note card or a little piece of paper. And some of you guys may have learned this in art school. I learned it from a friend who went to art school, but I'll just put my hand on the piece of paper and I just use it to work my way across. I learned it by accident doing a, a live art show once. I was doing a, a painting in front of a, like a banquet. <laughs> and I was working my way across instead of the other way. And then I realized I had smeared some of these pieces. And so just trying to redefine and fix that was a very stressful and we got it worked out at the end. but you know, for this, this just helps us save a little bit of the stress and worries. And then just tighten these lines up a little bit. And this also could be the point where, again, you don't have to do the detail, but if you see like in this picture, we've got our, our trees and plants going on right here. What I'll do is I just kind of do like a little circle, kind of marking where it is. Like I notice over these double windows, there's kind of a tree. So I'll just put a line, know I'm coming back to get that tree. And we got all these really big trees right here. So I'll just do like a half circle and a half circle. And then there you see these little other branches. And they don't have to be spot on. You can, you know, if you love drawing plants or if they're not your favorite, we'll show you some tricks on how to do those as well. And then even though these trees aren't necessarily beside the house, uh, these guys right here, they're along the road and on the side, it still kind of adds a cool little border and helps with the weight of the picture so like right now it looks like it's off with all the plants here nothing here so i'll just you know creative liberty and just put a few things here and there was like a palm tree we can come back to but again i'll just put the half circles knowing that i got some plants here and there we kind of given ourselves a background we know we're going to come back to for this house and uh yeah so now it's just uh making sure these lines are as straight and nice as you can get them Again, this is where you do a little bit of the, the detail. So like in the columns, you can see right here, there are very thin brick lines. And I'm not gonna be able to nail that with my ruler, but in the end, there's a, a thing you can do just to, you can still capture that texture in detail without having to be 100% realistic detail. But I'll just do some really smooth lines across. If you wanna use a ruler, please go for it. But 
I've been doing a few of these and I just kind of get my lines going across. And what's fun about like when you do brick houses, you can notice that bricks are not perfect 90 degrees, the way they've been cut or because of the mortar and things on there. So you can have a little bit of the wiggle line that kind of gives it the real texture. As well as these shingles right up here, you can tell they're cut and layered in a, a different way where each square is just a little bit bigger, or smaller than the other. I just saw the mechanical question, mechanical pencil one from Chris on here. I, I, this is a Tombow mechanical pencil. It's called the Graph. And uh, I got this several years ago. I've been using it for a long time and it's just great. It uses a 0.05 lead. The only thing I always keep forgetting is you have to press it down with this thing. So I'm always like, I'm used to the old school and just nothing happens. You got a fun little hidden eraser in here, which you can do a little cleanup. But yeah, for this, again, for this point, we're just making sure all our lines are nice and straight before we come in and clean them up. This right here. And again, this is what's really cool about these coins helping here, where it's just keeping the ruler very nice and level for me too, especially when it's like hanging onto the edge of the paper. Mm -hmm. All right. A little bit of this. All right. Was there any questions from anybody for about just this portion up in the pencil before we start getting closer to the pen and ink anywhere? I don't know if uh, Michelle, if you had anything or um, how the crowd's doing out there. Yeah. So the most the most of the questions we've been getting are um, if you number your drawings. Do you do any of that? Like or, when I'm finished and signing them, or in the process? Uh, I, I guess talk about both. They didn't specify, okay. <laughs> um, and maybe just touch on um, a few tips for beginners. Yeah, definitely. All right. Well, again, I'll, let me back up even further. The way this started was once we went to a family's uh, get together. They're having, I think, it was a, a baby announcement party, or they no, somebody had just bought a new home. So I was doing this as a housewarming gift, and so I had never done a house portrait before. So I just took a picture and I tried to draw it, and it was not anywhere near as where I've gotten to today, but it was a great practice. And somebody at the party saw that gift and said, hey, would you make one for me? Can I give you some money for, you know, for a house portrait? And that's kind of slowly how I got, I was able to build a little, you know, opportunity to make these for people and make them as gifts and sell them on my website. And then since then I would go and just, um, I would see other people online. There's so many other phenomenal artists out there. I would just like how they did their houses, how they um, made certain things look. And I just felt like, all right, that looks awesome. I want mine to have the same professionalism, but I also want to have my aesthetics and my style. And so I kind of kept drawing the way I draw things still, but I just, I, I would learn from other people and see how they did the uh, way the house looked. Well, one of my things I kind of try to focus on as best I can for probably about 95% of my houses is like a two dimensional look, just a straight on. I've, a few times I've done a 3D look where it's kind of got depth and perspective coming from two different angles. And that's just because of the house placement or if the, the people whose house I was drawing um, were not local and I couldn't get a picture myself, they, that's the only picture they could send me. And then sometimes it'd be a gift and the only way I would get a shot, especially if it's out of the country or out of the state, we have to go onto some of these real estate sites and just, you know, that's the only reference you get. <laughs> but, um, but for numbering, I, um, I don't necessarily number my, my pieces other than um, I keep a save file on my computer for that way. But when I do, like we're doing now, everything's pretty much done in one, on one page one time. Sometimes if the house is super detailed, if it's two story and there's so many different layers of texture, I'll scan the pencil and save it. And um, I actually learned that from some comic book artists. They save their pencils just in case something happens in the process of making a book. They're like 22 pages in some of those books. And if you mess up and you don't have the original pencil, you're in a, a tough spot and the guy doesn't have time to redraw it. So it's just a kind of a safety thing for me, just in case a, a kid or a pet comes from behind or power goes out or who knows what happens when you mess up. It's just nice to know you have a backup. So if you, you know, if you have a copier where you can scan it or a printer, that's great. If not, take a picture with your phone because you can still, you know, blow that up and print it out through whatever computer apps and things you have. But that's just one of my, um, one of my biggest learning tips for these is, you know, scan and save your pencil just in case. Because there's, there's definitely been a few times where I, um, I maybe went too high with a line because I got distracted or just had a smear and I just like, I had to start over. and Sometimes I didn't have that scan, so I had to redraw the whole house. And <laughs> knowing that, it kind of like makes your heart sink because you kind of got yourself on a schedule. Was there any more, Michelle? 
I think that's that covers it. Um, if you, I mean, the only other question I saw that might be interesting to answer is um, how do you handle a house drawing from an angle? Um, pretty much it's just, again, I've learned this on my own. It's just, I'll find like kind of a, a center point for the house or the paper. So let me get my scrap paper back out. We'll just use the back of the picture for right now. If it's at an angle, I try to find the best way to center the house. And the, but you know they they tell you to have perspective lines. So I, for me, I always just do kind of a give myself a middle where I want the picture to be. And also, kind of like for 3D, you're gonna have to do even more with shading and texture and, and light. So I kind of figure out where I want the sun and angles to come from, and then I'll just kind of give myself like these little lines going right here. I try to keep them as equal as possible. This is more feel like kind of like a business building type of an angle. I give myself another line right here. And so, so I have a picture one. Just imagine the house right here is our house and it's at an angle. Just like, all right, well, this is the side. And then I'll just do again my scribbling. Maybe there's a, a little higher part of the house and we'll keep coming down. And if there's a porch, you just got to kind of like make sure you're following these lines as your guide. So if this is the porch and the door, you just kind of, if you get going too fast, you put a window that looks wrong right here and it doesn't flow with the house. But for the 3D ones, I've done quite a few. They just mentally, I just have to get my mind prepared and take a little bit longer, but I just try to give myself, you know, guidelines as well through the middle and through the sides. And then maybe the sun's right here for us. So just imagine this is where we're getting our light. I'll put more of my, my shading and texture techniques heavily on this side as opposed to, to this side. This side, I'll just kind of give a little bit or put it more down here since the light's coming from this way. And that's kind of a, a thing just to pay attention to if you are doing houses like that from three dimensional. Try to figure out where your light is for shading and shadow because you can't put the same shading on both sides. It'll kind of look weird because you don't have, you know, two suns shining on everything. So hopefully that makes sense. If not, please, again, you can email me or, um, Hit me up on my private messages on social media and everything. All right, so again, this this is the pencil. It's a little bit more cleaned up, and here's like where again where the, more the plants are. So I just try to like we got a big bush right here by the column. So I kind of just give it a little squiggle, and it's hard to tell how many exactly are right there. And I like doing plants on people's houses, especially as new ones. So I try to go a little bit more than what they are. Just you know, it's fun to exaggerate and uh, have a little bit of I'll thumb of the plants. I'm not going to make them over the top, but like you can tell these are newly planted. So you just kind of give it a little bit more life. You can kind of guess what it's going to be if you want. I've had some people just ask me on their own, just can you put some azalea bushes or these in, in that yard, even though we don't have them. And I'll just Google those up and look at them later. But again, I'm just kind of giving myself a little room to look with the house. Hey, Josh. Yes. Um, can you hold the um, the house photo in frame for a second, just for a few people if they want to take yeah, a no screenshot problem. or, you know, capture Definitely. it <laughs> somehow? No yeah. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> just for a yeah, few you seconds. See, you see little plants. You can actually see a little bit of mulch right here. You got the sidewalks. I don't necessarily do all the front of the sidewalk like you're seeing here, but I will do like just the front centered sidewalk. And. Uh, but try to remember these little lines right here for the, the siding. And I, I love these little trims here on the corner because they kind of help us when we do our lines in just a little bit. And you'll see too, a lot of houses have different shaped windows and some will have curtains, some will have blinds. Don't put anything there. I'll show you my little, little thing that I do and then you can kind of come up with your own version of that if you want or if you have some another, if you want to be more detailed than I do it. But again, leave those squares open because you see right here half, half the windows have open curtains and the other half are closed. And then what's hard to tell right here, there's a chimney. And so we've got, got a little spot where I had already kind of pre-sketched it out. But I'll sometimes, even though I take a picture like this, I'll look around the house as best I can before I go make sure I don't miss anything. And uh, too, if you're doing it as a gift for somebody, they may have something they like special about the house. And it's nice to know what that touch is so you can kind of like, do something fun with it a little bit later. All right. Now I'm gonna play with this top part real quick for a second. I'm gonna show you just what I like to do because again, you see these lines are all jagged. All the squares are different shapes. 
we're not going to draw those. That, that's not going to happen today. And you see the final, see what I did, but to get started, I'll just do a little kind of a squiggle, not super squiggle. It's almost a straight, but it's almost like just I'm, I'm bumping my hand just a little bit to get these little uneven lines and I'll come again and I'm eyeballing it. But if you're not that confident in yourself to do those little lines, this again where your ruler can come in handy and you go right down the middle, just do each little dash. Like that, I'm, even, I'm drawing a little light again, I'm sorry, but do those little dashes. And then we just take the T-wheeler again and just line it up and go across. I'm gonna switch, guys, if you don't mind, I'm gonna switch to this, uh, this gray brush pen just so you can see my lines better for the pencil. So I'm gonna highlight these dashes again. And this comes in handy if you guys are doing um, houses with lots of brick or different types of siding, because this house has kind of a thin siding, but other houses have really thick siding. And I'll just come again with the ruler. And I'll slowly cross it out. It's a straight line, but since this is the, the jaggedy, I'll just kind of give it a little, little nudge right there. I'll go back over my earlier line right here. And I just kind of connect with that dot a little bit. And again, do this in pencil. Don't do this in pen, because we're going to erase some of this in a second. I'm gonna do one more line and then we can show you what I'm gonna do. So now we got these jagged lines. You can just come back and just kind of do these even separations like down it. And then you see you're getting different shaped squares like the tile look. And then the next line I put in the middle so it kind of has that displacement of them, almost like how a brick house would be done. And every once in a while I'll do one close to the other one just to, because we're humans and we're not perfect. There's a little imperfections here and there. And again, it goes with the handmade look as well, the hand-drawn look. And so kind of, you just kind of build your own little grids to play around in. And when I, I do houses, I like to like focus on one section at a time. So like I'll, I'll finish this whole area up first and then I'll come back and I'll try to do each window or I'll try to do like this spot and I'll work my way down. And again, back to the house, we got the, the siding right here. So again, you can do the with the teal ruler or any type of ruler if you're steady holding it, the other one normal. And I just try to give myself a little dashes across here so I know to come back. And I'll even put them on the windows, which you'll see why later. And I'll also put them on this window. And you put them on the door. Now, for me, when you see the final, my lines won't go all the way across. If you want your lines all the way to go across, then I would just do the one, one side and then you can work it across. But the way I'm going to do it, it's just, I just do them sporadically. So it adds some detail and texture, but it's not for the entire house. It's just certain elements. It kind of gives it just a, again, a minimalist feel for it. And so that's just kind of guys. And then for like the shingles, they're all weird shapes. So I do just kind of a, uh, with my thin pen, I'll do a bunch of lines. I'll show you later at the end. And also, don't forget the chimney. We got our chimney up here for the bricks. I do those very close because bricks just look super tiny. And uh, you can stagger them like we do the shingles right here as well. And so, this is kind of like most of the pencil. Let me see where our next one is. All right, before I move over to the first round of ink stuff, are there any questions about the pencil for anybody? Anybody have any, you want to see a little bit closer? Or... This is kind of like where I try to get mine before I start inking the, the final piece. Some of you, if you're not as confident with your inking, then feel free to do a little bit more detail in shapes. So for like the, the, the bushes and trees, if you want to give them a little bit of more because I mean, at the beginning we talked about knowing circles and triangles, so the plants have a lot of circles. So I just do all these like little half C squiggles for my trees. I kind of follow the line I made. But as you can see, trees don't follow perfect symmet uh, symmetry and they don't have a, a, a smooth like roundness like a cloud or things like that would have. There's a little rough and jagged and grown. So I try to remember that when I'm doing these little 
outlines of it. And I'm not gonna draw every leaf that it would take us a lifetime to do. So I'll do these fun extra layers sometimes to my tree and just, I'll look at what some other artists do as well, just kind of see how they capture trees. Some people will do like the first layer of every leaf like this almost. And you know, for me, it just feels like that's just so much detail and I don't want it to take away from the house because this is kind of a background piece. You can make the front plants have some detail, but you just don't want to take away from the house with your amazing floral and fauna drawing skills. But if, you, if you're not confident with going straight to pen in the next few minutes, I would just uh, allow yourself room to just, just give a little bit more detail to everything. But for right here, as you can see, we kind of got our very good straight lines on the roof. And as you can see, right, these lines are here. We've I've made them the same thickness as well as going up through here. And so those, those white trims right there all kind of match up right in this way. Now, I've never had anybody, you know, too upset or upset at all because a, a line was not perfect again. Because like when we're hand drawing this, it's it's hard to pull off something like somebody would do on an iPad with Procreate or things like that. This is, you know, a fun gift to do or hand drawing a house. So don't stress yourself out about if the line has a little dip or anything. It's they're understanding that you drew this house yourself and it's a lot of work. It's hard. It's a lot of straight lines sometimes. So just having that mental stress kind of kills it for the thing. So just enjoy it, have fun, learn from it. Again, if you have a copy, you can come back to it and you know start over again, learn from the mistake you made in the last one. But so this is for me personally, before I go to the inking it, this is what it'll look like. All right. Okay, so this one's kind of been inked a little bit ahead of time because I want to give you guys some, show you some fun things with the techniques I'd like to do with textures and lines and everything. But you can see how we got the, the shingles just from the squiggly lines right here. We made the little, little squares and so I didn't use every single line it went across. It came with that fun look right there. And so you see right here how, like, how it does go all the way across. You can still kind of make out what's happening there. And same with the, the chimney, you can see how thin my lines are for the bricks will clean up a little bit. And you can see all the little bushes and plants that we got here. I do um, little dot marks too for me. This is for the grass and mulch will be in front of the house. I just, I, I, like, I like drawing plants on the house. I like to kind of give them uh, this, I have a little way of doing grass blades. It's just like my, <laughs> I know it sounds funny, but I, I like drawing grass for some reason. And so I like, I want to come back and make it, uh, very fun and have depth to it and so I at least give myself a little marker to come back to along with there's the sidewalk and you can see for the swing it's got chain links we don't have pen small through chain links I just put little dots kind of helps represent how the chain works and then again you can see how all our lines right here are the same you know thickness that are going on so I left some open just so I can draw along with you guys so what I like to do when I first do my pen is I like to use the thinnest uh, size first the tombow I use either zero one or just one because if there is a little imperfection I can kind of tweak it a little bit and then I can come back over it later with a thicker line and so right now I'm going to use the one I'm just get my ruler right here and so there's like my line right there and you can see how like it's not as thick as the other one but it, it's it's close it goes and connects those two right there. And I'll get the next size up, which is my three, which will be the main size I'll use for the whole house. And since I've already got the line drawn with the pencil, this is where I'll come and just do it by hand. But I encourage you guys to take your time with these lines because it's easy just to squiggle. And just, I love coffee, but I don't drink coffee before I draw. It's like it's <laughs> the jitters, and especially when you're doing straight lines, you don't want the jitters when you're doing them. But I'll come back over the line. I'll start right here. And come over and stop. Now, if you're drawing a long straight line, it's hard. And when you stop, and if you start again, like right where you left off, you leave a weird loop or an overlap. So let me show you this real quick. So I stopped, and now I'm going like there's like this imperfect line right there. And you're like, how does that kind of? It's not huge for us, but right here, like you got that little lip there. 
And so a, a trick I learned from, um, from some, they're called like an ink master or ink smith. There's some kind of name for it's the greatest people who work with pens. But a trick I learned from them is say we're doing our line right here. And then we stop. This is a very important trick I've learned and it's, it's saved me a lot. It's start back over where you drew just a little bit. And I keep following through. And now you can't necessarily a huge, see a huge break or dip like you can see right here. I know that's not massive, but you'll see some later. But if you do have a stop and you're trying to finish the line, just go back a little bit deeper and then just slightly just bring your pen over and start going again. Because sometimes pens too, when they start, they start with a thinner line and then they get thicker as you pull down. And I don't put a lot of weight with my hand when I draw. I'm a very light drawer, but my kids, my son Finn, he's 10. He draws so heavy, he's always, you know, breaking pencils or smashing crayons. So just, again, it's with your technique. So like we still have to go up to this, these kind of these lines. So I'm gonna start again right here. And then just slowly just drag the pen up over. And then you can come back again, just do a second lap. And we got a nice little line. There's a little thickness, but it's not super off and it doesn't have like this little pokey guy going on right there, messing it up. And for me, I like to do the main outline first of the house, kind of trapping myself in. And I'm using the, the point three and these lines that are originally here were size one. And so like you can see, I got the, the thicker line going on right there. And I just go nice and slow. For my art, when I started doing it, I started out as therapy. I was in a, a pretty bad accident and had years of recovery and some surgeries from that accident. And through the process of what happened, because I almost died at my, in the accident, I almost died in the hospital recovering. Um, through all that and the trauma, uh, some friends and my family kind of pulled me aside and realized I needed to get some help. So I went to some counseling and I found out I was diagnosed with uh, PTSD from it. Didn't know what that was, didn't know how to deal with it. And through the counseling, um, I learned several techniques that come in handy actually for pen and ink. And one is breathing. So sometimes taking like a really good deep breath in, hold it for a second, and then releasing it, and then to go to draw, it kind of helps do that. And some, it doesn't even hurt to do like five of those in a row, just like a, and just let it out. And I'm not trying to make this very yin yang or yoga or what, anything like that, but it just helps you to have a nice, clean, smooth stroke and just have a good focus of what you're doing. because. But house porches, I mean, even though this is a small house, there's still a lot of straight lines, a lot of squares. And if you don't want to have to repeat anything, it's nice to try to get it right on the first try. And so just when my counselor taught me that, you know, just for dealing with it, it also came into practice for doing the house. And so right here, so we got this big line. So I'm just going to do a deep breath. And then nailed it. It's kind of nice on camera, first try. <laughs> but it just it says something works for me. Everybody, everybody is different, and they draw and deal with things differently. But again, this just it became a therapy for me, and now it's my career, which is kind of crazy. But a lot of the things help you with having a steady hand. And when you're do, committing the pen and ink, this is the final piece, and you want it to look as right and best as possible. So just taking your time and not rushing it really helps like that, especially for these big fat lines. And it's okay if you don't get it in one or two strokes. It's just, uh, you know, if you do mess up, just come back over it. So I'm gonna stop right here in the halfway and there's like a little thickness right here. So I'm just gonna follow it over again. And go back over. And so you can see right here at the very end, my, my pen lifted. So this thing's got a little boldness to it. So I'm gonna fill that in first. And it's, you know, it's not super bad, but I'll just come back again to the end and I'll just try to overlap it a little bit and try to compensate. And if it's still like you feel like I'm not, I'm not comfortable with that thick line, because I bet some of us have that already. This is where like the pen and ink hacks and, you know, it's not cheating, but this is where it comes in handy. It's where you can add some fun more texture. So look, that line is super thick right there. And what we're going to do is just add a few more squares right here. So. So it kind of takes away the attention <laughs> of that thick line. And again, it's part of the playing with the details. So we kind of like masked and hit it a little bit. 
but this is the point where I like, again, we'll outline the whole house. I'm gonna just focus on this one side right here with you guys so I can show you how I do a lot of my other lines, but let's finish this side right here. Now, one thing I'm not going to do in this house, I just felt like it would take away is the, we got this trellis right here, these little tiny dots. And again, that could take forever. We can stretch ourselves or lining it, lining it up and everything, but sometimes leaving something out is not going to destroy the piece. That's just something to think about. So put that over here. And we'll just do this window as well. Before we start doing the details, are there any questions about these line works for anybody? Because we're going to talk about the bricks and the, the windows and the shingles in just a second, but just for the basic lines or straight lines or working on the pins, we have any questions? Everybody doing all right? I think we're good right now. There are a few questions I've saved for the Q&A uh, for if we have any time for questions after. Okay, definitely. All right. Well, let's, let's switch over to the detail and then we'll um, do some questions. And everybody, this took me you know, a few years to kind of get down to where I'm doing it in a way where I love it and I feel comfortable with it. And my daughter, when she draws, she's 12, she wants every piece she does, even her practice to be a perfect, amazing, let's hang it in the gallery piece. And so I just have to remind her as I want to remind you guys, is just take your time, just do as many of these as possible. And then when you start feeling comfortable, pursue it as a gift or however you want to do it or do it for yourself or for a family member. But just don't um, get mad at yourself if it takes five or six or 20 to get it down. I, I mean, I've been, I'm 43 and I've been doing this business for uh, almost four years now, but um, it just, I've, I've learned a lot. I've been drawing my whole life, but just for the business end and all these things, I just, the main thing is to have fun, take your time, don't stress out about it. All right, so before we get to the, the final page for the, the details, I wanna share like we made these dashes right here for the shingles. Now, this is just my personal preference. You may want to do it differently. So if you want to look at the house with me real quick, we got the, the shingles here. They're really small, thin lines. You go all the way across the whole house. That's a lot of lines. I feel like in the end, when we pen and ink it, it's just going to look like a, a thick blob or just kind of look weird. It's not going to represent the house that well. And so for me, what I found that I like to do for this is I'll do these lines right here along the side, but I make them at different lengths, and I'm also not going all the way across. So right here, just going to... The short one, long one, short, short, long. So I'm making up my own patterns just so there's not a, a fluid or a system to it, but it just looks like you can tell there's something going on right here. There, it's got to be part of the shingles. And some will be the same size, but it's almost like Morse, uh, Morse code, I'm sorry, and do it like that. And I'll use my the one for those because they're super thin. And so you can kind of tell like, all right, we're getting the, the shingle vibe going right here. And since the window is so close to the edge, I won't put them on this window, but I will put them on the, the center windows because there's a little bit more space here versus right here. And then again, these windows, we have some tiny lines right here. And you'll notice some of the older houses, they have a lot of trim and a lot of framework and layers going on with the window frames. So I sometimes won't do all of those. I'll do the main outline and then I'll do like the glass outline. Now we talked earlier about the, the windows, how some have curtains, uh, some have like the wind up glass, others may have blinds or, you know, whatever. And to avoid dealing with all those, I just to do a little reflection in the glass. And so for me, and this is something I learned from comic books of all places. I just do a couple of dashes. And you got like a little, like a little reflection on the, on the window right there. And then sometimes I'll even do a little whoosh, as I call it. That's not the proper artistic term, but I'll do this little. And I, and I won't do it for every glass pane either. I'll just do it like every other glass pane. And I mainly like the dashes a little bit because they're not predominant. They're not taken away from the rest of the house, but you can tell that's the glass versus the texture. Because I don't want to leave this, the window square open just because I feel like it's a good negative space that should be filled with something. If you want to do curtains, you can. They're not that hard. I just kind of look at it as a, a light curve. And so, like these are just straight ones. And uh, some houses, like older houses, have a curved one, but I'll, I'll sometimes just do a little 
curve here and then you can add like the little lines for the wrinkles. But I rarely, rarely do curtains for people in their windows unless they ask for it. But that's just a, a little fun way of doing it. You put the other one, like try to come close as the same distance possible, give it a little bit of a, a break right there. So from a distance, you know, we've got a curtain in our window. So that's another option. And then other houses, they'll have a, sh uh, a shutter. This one doesn't have it on there, but I'll do like a, I feel the shutters in solid. So let me just do a quick one for you, show what I mean. So we'll get the ruler out. And they're not, shutters are not usually the same size as the window. They're just kind of an accent for the house. So they won't be super huge. So I'll give myself just a solid line. This is where I use the, the thick pen because we're going to fill this in solid. So this is the, the combo 05. So I always like to do a, for me when I shade in like full with black, I like to at least do, for me, this is how I call it, I call it two laps around the border. So then there's thickness because if I, if I don't, I feel I'll, I'll bleed out and then I can just kind of do like a little swirling effect. Like so right here I'm doing and just pull it in and it keeps you from going out onto the paper. And I learned this technique from when I used to do landscaping. I hope everybody out here is done landscaping, but when you're mowing a big property, they tend to tell you to do two laps around the whole border, like baseball fields or golf courses. And then you come in doing the line work, but it leaves it so you don't have a, a weird edge around the property from where it was cut, because sometimes you have to turn the mower around and things like that. And so that kind of helped me think with the pin, having that thick line there, I won't smear out. But this is usually how I do my, my shutters. I just do a solid black, no matter what the color it is. And we got that funness right there. But again, same with the windows. Like I like to just do the dashes and I'll change it up too. So this window had two. I'll, I'll skip a window. I'll come over here and do like three little ones. Dun, dun, dun. Like that. I don't think you can see that. And then the other window, I'll just do two. And so then you kind of make out like, all right, we're getting a, we're getting a, feel, a good feel of this house now. We got the, the texture for the the siding, we got the glass, we got the little shingles right here in the roof. And then for the, the roof texture, it's just, again, look at this. There's no way any of us are gonna take time and knock out all those. So I'll turn the paper sideways and I try to get along this line as best I can and I make sure the line's thick. And again, I'm using the one and don't go fast with this one. And I just start doing these little streaks. And I try to make them all different sizes, but I make sure the pin, the nib touches the thick line. And even if one shoots off at an angle, that's okay, because we'll come back. And then I'll come back and fill in the, the, the wider spaces. Like so, and so then we got the edge, and you can, if you want to come back even more, just do a little bit more. And I'll occasionally, you can see that, sorry. I'll put a little, a few little dashes in here to add like a little roughness to the roof. And then I'll put a few more lines out here, just out in the open. And so then we got like our, our shingles right here. I mean, think about that. I mean, it's, it's so many thin little lines and little lips we would have to do. And this kind of, I feel, kind of captures that in just like a little aspect there. And if you get those houses, the, the Spanish houses that have the, the clay shingles, you can play around with those and just make sure you just get everything like spread out. Don't do a straight line like this. It's kind of fun just to, you know, space them out every other one and give it a little bit a fun feel like this, almost like a scale or uh, a chain mail or something like that or a chain versus just doing a straight because then it'll be just stuck down. It's just repetitive, weird. All these hooks like that and so but anyway most of the houses we'll be doing have like these straight lines across it right there and then we're going to do this real quick too the column and also the chimney are kind of the same with the line thickage and the the bricks i don't think it's just a word but we just we made it up today guys so I'd, i do my brick lines almost the same as we're doing the the shingle lines where they're they're different lengths 
Just go all the way across, use that line to guide it. Every once in a while, like I'll do these, like I do a palm tree, I'll do one or two straight lines that go all the way across. And then just pay attention where you do your first brick marks. Then do the next ones in the middle. And then the final ones do in the middle. And you just kind of stagger them down. And you're giving yourself a, a nice little brick texture here without having to draw every single brick. And also doesn't feel like a big, thick bulging blob on the paper, kind of still like a, you know, at a glance, you can tell what's going on. And for me, just as a minimal artist, it's, it's so tempting to want to fill in and do every little thing, but for the minimalist aspect, you want to take stuff away and leave stuff out, but still try to capture the feel and the vibe of the house and family. And so I won't do the whole chimney, but we'll just go back and do the same thing again. It's just to get the lines going across. And then remember little dashes for in between the spaces for the bricks. All right. And then for plants, let's, let me switch over to those. So here's like the final what the house originally looked like that I gave to the family I drew for them. This is what it came out to. And as you can see for, uh, where is it? here's the, the original pencil we were working on. So here's this line for the tree. I just came over, like if you look at the picture, go through pictures, it's like a, a fun baby, not a baby, but it's a, a, it's a new pine tree in a sense. We can't do every little leaf. And so I kind of just gave it like a shape instead of uh, the detail. And I kind of just, in my head, just imagine I'm just doing a, a Christmas tree or a, a, an uneven comb like so. And I just do one side at a time. And, you know, as you go down, you get a little bit wider to the base of the tree. And you go right here and just do the same thing. And just It looks more natural when they're not as even and broken up like this. But that's just kind of like the loose as I'll get with a plant. Usually I'll fill it in more like you see with these trees. Like we did like the little half circle and we came over, then I'll come back in here and I kind of break it up to little different leaf, leaf bunches and things like that. And I'll just, again, it plays with like knowing your shapes and circles and squares. So now we did a circle pencil over there, just do the kind of like half circles for the leaves. And then here's the grass, that's something I like to do. I'll do my initial lines are almost like little baby triangles like baby little blades or just, just like upside down V's, really thin ones. And I try to make them all at different angles because again, you know, grass is a fun texture that you can kind of make a border a line with your house and you want it to look you know, as natural as possible. So every time you do one, just do it slightly at a different angle or opposite. So when it's all together, you got this really cool grass line. And I just do a, like a bunch of little dashes for grass blades. And every once in a while, you can see this little tiny guy right here. He's just like like three upside down triangles together, upside down Bs. And I did the same with the, the bushes here. We just added like little C's in here for them. Now, if I had more room for a smaller house or sometimes people ask for a bigger paper. I will add more detail and more layers to the, the plants and bushes. But right here, you can see our bushes look way better than these little tiny guys right here. We kind of added them life and gave a balance all the way across the house. You know, these were all like random different plants. And so we kind of gave a little bit of a flow right there. And I'm not taken away from the house. I'm not um, all training it or anything too much. And then we'll have like little accents that we need to, I'm sorry about shaking the camera there. We have like the little address on there. If you, if you can draw that small, go for it. If not, no pressure. Again, like see with the chain for the hair, I just did dots. I didn't try to draw every little chain link. And then with the, the roof of the house, we just did the lines all the way across. And you can see from my shingles right here, we just did, did uneven at dashes at all the different key points. Like I like putting around the door. I feel it makes the door really front and center. So that's the entrance to our home. We're inviting people in there. So you want to make the house like, look, like this is my house, this is my door. And I really encourage you, get that door right. Because especially when I know my wife, the door is an important part of your house, especially the details. And we have like a custom made door at our house. and I just it's it's important like to just try to get it as best you can instead of just making a, a solid square and so their house had these light little rectangles going across even though it's a solid gray door but 
you know, it just helps them like really have that even more personal feel of their house, even with a little minimalist here. And then I offer to do people's addresses or their uh, last name or just different things. I try to figure out how can I make this even more personable for them. Now, my second favorite thing to draw besides grass is clouds. And I'm gonna show you how I do my clouds because I like to add clouds to some of the houses, especially ones that don't have a lot of plants, especially, you know, like those new neighborhoods that get built all the time, those new suburbs. There's not a lot of trees and plants to work with. So I'll use my three. I'm not gonna do pencil on this one. So you guys, I would encourage you to do pencil, but I like big poofy clouds. I like all the different little creases and folds in the cloud. And so for some reason, I just like to embellish on them. And for me, I, I start with a line to get me to the beginning of my cloud and then just play with circles. And I'll do a few little ones, uh, that big poof and a few little between it and then another big one. And then again, not all clouds are the same size or same shape. So you know, we can just add as um, Alex, uh, what's his name? Mr. Ross, I can't remember his first name. I'm blanking everybody. He would like, you know, is that a happy cloud right here? Just a little happy cloud. Maybe one under there. Every once in a while, I'll do a, a, a full cloud. I'll just put a little goof in there. And then sometimes I'll even just make the cloud be completely behind the house. And we're adding just a whole another layer to our picture. We're giving more depth to this two dimensional house. We have to, you know, we have the grass, the bushes, the house, the trees and clouds. And so you've added depth to it. And if somebody has other houses or things super close, I don't do those. I just try to solely make the house portrait about that house. You know, some people may want a mother-in-law suite or a shed or something in their background or fence, like this house. They have a fence. I didn't do that. I didn't do the mailbox. I just want to make the whole thing just about their home and just, you know, where they stay. So anyway, um, do we have any questions about the ink process and this, the details? Hey, hey, Josh, um, I saved a couple questions um, okay. for the end. I know um, we, ha we don't have that much time left, but maybe you can go over a couple. And then if anyone else has any questions, I'm sure they can reach out to you on Instagram. Um, but just a couple of questions that I saw that definitely came up more than once is okay. how, what do you recommend for drawing um, for bricks or tin roofs? You know, the outside of houses don't all look the same. So right. some tips for that. Um, and yeah, then definitely. if you want to also go over, I know at the beginning you started with oh, the drawings already drawn, but maybe just quickly talk about how you usually get started when you start one of these portraits. Okay, definitely. All right. So for my neighbor actually has a tin roof and I've done a few tin roofs. I'll just, I know for the ones next to us, they have just a straight line kind of like down there. And so the, since this is kind of at an angle, um, again, I've been doing this for a little longer, so I would encourage you to use a ruler, but I kind of just kind of get the line going and try to make sure it flows with this. And what I'll do once it's done, I'm, I'm going to ink this with a thin pen. I'm, I'm jumping the gun on some of it, but so you have the crease going down for the tin roof. I'll add just another faint little line right here just to kind of give it a little bit of a thickness to give it its own little life to the house. And then if you want, you can almost do like the windows. And since the metal has like scratches and textures too, you can just do a little, little dots here or accent or just put a few here. And so I'm just adding just a little bit of these little marks, but it kind of gives it more of a metal look versus a brick look. And then we mentioned bricks. I'll show you another thing I like to do when I do bricks. So just remember this column had bricks on it. Make sure you guys can see that. I'll make these a little bit thicker than they are in this house. So just pretend this is how they go. And we do the, the lines to divide the bricks. Uh, you know, bricks are, sometimes have cracks or, in, you know, imperfections to them. So I'll sometimes throw a few dots or a dot in random places on just every random brick. And so you kind of give it its own little you know, a little feeling gives it, again, I, I'd say texture a lot because each part of the house is going to have a different type of texture. You're going to have the bricks, you're going to have the siding, this will have the trellis plus the plants and the siding. And so find a, a different thing to do each thing. So like for bricks, I'll do a dot or a quick slash metal. I like to do these little, little dashes. But again, I'll show you all this stuff. Like I learned from like in this book right here, I was telling you guys, um, rendering in pen and ink. They just show you all these just fun, like little, like this guy, look at this house right here real quick, this church. Even though they left out stuff, you still feel the magnitude of this building. 
and with this line, they do the same thing. They have like just little fields and dots and things just to kind of capture it. They went in way more detail than we did with plants in this church, but they also have the thinnest quill pen. And so for us, it's just kind of making it our own version, our own modern take on the house. Hopefully that answered the question for the, the bricks and the tin roof. I think so, yeah. Yeah, I think um, just before we wrap up the class, if you really quickly just want to maybe in like a minute or two, just talk about how you get started. And then for everyone else, um, if you have any questions, um, feel free to reach out to um, Josh on Instagram or to Tombow USA. And there will also be a replay of the class in a couple days. So you can follow along again um, if you missed any of his tips or tricks. Definitely. All right. So let's just pretend this is the, the blank sheet of the house. Uh, for, if you want to go really back to the beginning, I have a, a page on my website, a contact section, if you want to order or commission me to do a house portrait. When they commission me, if I ask them if they're local to give me the address, I like to get my own photos. If they're a little far away, I try to tell them what type of picture I want, because one day it'd be cool to just see all the houses I've ever drawn. You could like tell by like, oh, that's his house. That's the house he drew. So I try to keep mine as similar as possible to the last one, just so it just kind of again, it goes with the aesthetic of who you are and your style. So for instance, this house, when I went to take it, uh, it was a tiny street. So I had to kind of creep in somebody's backyard to, or their yard just to get the shot. So thankfully everybody was cool with it. I've had, had any issues taking pictures before, but so I got my straight on shot, made sure everything looks good. Everything was visible. Make sure when you take a picture or you get a picture house, you play with the lighting. So I had actually, I have an iPhone. So I used the lighting technique um, after I took it to brighten and make sure I could see everything before I left. Cause you don't have to come back or like I drove all that way and then get the picture I wanted. So make sure you double check, especially I know it's bright outside sometimes to make sure you have everything. You can see all these things. Cause that kind of helps me process in my head how I'm going to draw it. And then for those who were not here at the beginning or missed the beginning, I'll just, honestly, I, I'll, when I get a house portrait, I just start out with just my pencil by itself and I'll just kind of give a shape. Just, I know it's going to be right here in the middle. And I try to make sure like I have an equal distance on each edge. So right here is an inch and a half. So I want to make sure that I come to an inch and a half right here. And so give myself a little line. So now I have this much space to work on the house. And like I said earlier, that leaves me room again for when we, you know, frame it or mat it or, you know, display it. We want to have like an equal space around the house. And you want to also make sure that you have room on the top and bottom for if you want to do plants and clouds and this so it doesn't feel like it's weighted on one end of the paper to the other. So if you even want to do your like you, know, you can do an illustrator or Photoshop, but if you want to do your own hand version of just like some they call them bleed lines, like your lines you don't want to pass that you can come back and erase later. So I made these like little square dashes. And that's usually how I'll do it. And then I'll kind of like just divide this up in quadrants usually. And then I'll start slowly with my T ruler trying to get these these roofs and lines ready. And I'll just kind of like, you know, I know this is gonna be here and this is gonna go here and this is here, all that stuff. I just kind of like just do a really scrappy first rough round look with it, make sure everything's got its place and I have room for everything. Cause like we said earlier, we don't wanna smear or have to come back on things like that. So just kind of, you're like, almost like you're making a rough map of what you're gonna draw. And then again, so like I said, these take three or four hours for me to do them because I'm just trying to get everything just right and equal because my first few I did too fast and I messed up. And so these are kind of like, like the, the layout, the beginning process. Awesome. Well, I think that's about all we have time for. I know the class went over just a few minutes. Um, I hope everyone enjoyed the class and there will be um, a replay shared. There will be a re replay of the class shared on michaels.com backslash classes in about 24 to 48 hours. And we'll also be sharing it on Tombo's Instagram page. So that that wraps up the, oh, Josh, do you have one more thing to say? I just wanna share one thing real quick, just um, for me as a creative, one thing that's been very helpful for me is surround myself by other creatives, but make sure there's somebody who can be honest with you. Like, they'll like tell you like, hey man, I love what you did here, but I would fix this or adjust, like somebody that's gonna be honest with you. It's great having mom and dad and grandma and grandpa like loving everything you do, but it's so helpful to be around another creative that you can be flexible with and you can both give and take critique for each other. It's so helpful. It'll make you a better artist, a better person, 
And so that's just my one last encouragement for you as an artist is find those who are going to lift you up and encourage you, but also they can tell you the hard things of like fix that line or retouch that up or something. So, but thank you everybody. Thank you, Tombo. Thank you, Michaels. And it was awesome. Yeah. Thank you everyone.